Hello teacher. Hello student. Welcome to today's lesson on the projection of point, lines and plane surfaces. In our last lesson, we have seen the introduction of the auxiliary views. Let's briefly revise the previous lesson as usual. In our previous lesson, we revised the concept of projection from our grade level lessons. Projection is classified as central or perspective and parallel projection. Parallel projection is later classified as oblique projection and orthographic projection. In orthographic projection, we have the principal views and the auxiliary views. Auxiliary views are projections taken from picture planes, which are not parallel to the principal planes. Auxiliary views are used to show through lengths, point of view, distance between skew lines, projection of solids, and true shape of the given geometric figure. A reference line is the line of intersection between two mutually perpendicular projection planes. This line is represented by a phantom line on the orthographic view. Finally, you have seen the horizontal and elevation projections are their projections from the principal and auxiliary projection planes. As we have discussed in the previous lessons, any object can have a projection when it's put on the projection planes. Let's think of the simplest figure on the technical drawing, point. Even though point isn't a real object because it lacks dimensions, we can represent it with a small dot or a small x. Points represent the exact location on a space. The orthographic projections of a point on various planes are obtained by extending projectors perpendicular to the picture planes and transferring distance from one plane to another in reference to the falling line. The location of the point in the pictorial view is described on the orthographic projection at the distance above the horizontal plane, the distance to the left of the profile plane, and the distance in front of the vertical plane. The front view of the point P is represented on the vertical plane, so it's represented as PV. And the top view of the point P is represented on the horizontal plane as PH. And the left side view of point P is represented on the profile plane as PP. The orthographic view is obtained by rotating the horizontal and vertical reference lines until both are in line with the vertical plane. Now, let's further project the same point on an auxiliary elevation plane. Notice that the point has new distance to the auxiliary plane than the distance to the profile plane. As you can see, the point P is located on the auxiliary plane at equal distance as from the horizontal plane. This is because both the auxiliary plane and vertical plane are perpendicular to the horizontal plane. Thus, the elevation of point P in a space above the horizontal plane will be truly projected on all elevation planes, which are perpendicular to the horizontal plane. This distance on the vertical plane can therefore be directly transferred with the help of the divider to the elevation plane, the position of point P accurately. I hope you have understood that. Let's check that with an activity. I will give you the pictorial drawing of a point with its dimension in front of the vertical plane, above the horizontal plane and to the left of the profile plane. And you have to provide the orthographic sketch of the point. 
create a uniform 10 by 10 units grid just as you are going to see on the screen so that you can draw your orthographic projection of the point. That was easy, wasn't it? Well, if you get this, it even gets easier. The projection of lines is obtained by projecting the two endpoints of the line and joining the respective projections by the straight lines. A line is considered to be infinite length, the portion between any two points on it simply specifies a segment. A line may lie at the true length into one or none of the principal planes of projection. True length of a line is the true distance between its end points. While projecting distances, some distances will be visible on two planes since they are both perpendicular to the third plane. Well, students, can you imagine what the projection of vertical or horizontal line would be? Try to sketch pictorial representation of a line which is parallel to vertical plane and then sketch its orthographic view 
by visualizing the unfolding of the glass box. Try the same process for the lines which are parallel to the profile and horizontal planes. Welcome back. I'm sure you enjoyed the activity well. The best way to sketch a line parallel to the principal plane is by sketching a parallel plane first. Let us see. The orthographic projection of a line parallel to the principal planes is called a through length or normal view of a line. A line which is parallel to the vertical plane is called frontal line and it appears as true lengths on the vertical picture plane. A line which is parallel to the horizontal projection plane is known as a horizontal line and it appears true length on the horizontal picture plane too. While profile line is a line which is parallel and true length to the profile plane what if the line is not parallel to any of the principal planes? A line which is inclined to all the principal planes is called an oblique line. The orthographic projection of an oblique line is an inclined line to all the principal planes. And none of the principal planes shows its true length. That means we will still need to find its true length with an additional plane, an auxiliary plane. This auxiliary plane is assumed to be parallel to the line and perpendicular to the horizontal projection plane. 
after you draw the orthographic projections of the oblique line, the reference line of this auxiliary plane is drawn parallel to the top view of the line at a convenient distance from the top view. Then, through the endpoints of the horizontal projection, draw projectors perpendicular to the reference line. On these projectors, set off the respective height locations of the endpoints to determine auxiliary projections of the endpoints. These distances can be obtained from vertical projection of the oblique line. Connect by straight lines, auxiliary projections of the endpoints. This line represents the oblique line in true length. The auxiliary plane that we took was perpendicular to the horizontal plane. But notice that we also can use an auxiliary plane which is perpendicular to the vertical plane and parallel to the frontal view or perpendicular to the profile plane and parallel to the profile view. When we say an oblique line is inclined to any of the principal planes, by saying inclined, it's an obvious fact that it makes an angle to the projection plane. But did you notice the difference between these angles? Well, it's about time that you learn the bearing and slope angles of a line. Have you ever noticed a leaning pole? This pole makes angle to the ground. How about its shadow? Does it have an angle too? Of course it has. We just have to set a reference just like the ground is a reference to the angle of the pole. Compass is a device which is basically used with directions. A compass points which way is north, south, east and west on the horizontal plane. Note that you cannot point vertically up to show north or downwards to south. Let's get back to the pole and put it in a glass box. Consider the pole as a line and let its shadow rest on the horizontal plane. Let's set the compass as a reference to measure the angle of the shadow. The angle of the shadow with respect to the north or south is known as the bearing of the line. Assuming the sun's ray is perpendicularly on the top, the shadow will be the horizontal projection of the pole. This way, the bearing of a line can be defined as the angle the horizontal projection of a line makes with respect to the points of the compass. Note that, since the bearing angle is measured from north or south, it cannot exceed from 90 degrees. In bearing representation, the north or south direction should be indicated first. The angle between the north-south line and the horizontal projection of the line is then specified next, and finally its direction from the reference endpoint toward east or west is mentioned. What about the slope angle of a line? If you ever climb a mountain, you will have to walk the slope. Slope is the angle that the line makes with the horizontal projection plane. The slope of a line can only be seen on the true length view of the line. The angle of the pole with the ground from the early activity is the slope of the pole. When projecting the true length of a line, the horizontal plane appears as an edge view. Therefore, the true slope of a line is measured from an elevation plane that contains the true length projection of a line. As you remember from our last lesson, an elevation plane is any plane that is perpendicular to the horizontal plane. We are not done with the lines yet. 
Can you visualize a projection of a line at a point? Well, try your pencil or pen. Cover your one eye and point the tip of your pencil or pen perpendicular to your eye. Don't bring it too close though. If you can see the diameter of your pencil, that could be a good example of the point view of a line. And one more thing. While doing so, notice that your eyes are perpendicular to the through lengths of the line. Let's clarify that. If the true length of a line appears in one of the principal or auxiliary planes, draw another auxiliary plane which is perpendicular to the true length of the line at a convenient distance. While drawing your projectors, and transferring distances. You will find that both ends of the line lies on the same projector line at equal distance. This gives the point view of the line. The two-dimensional figure is known as plane. Planes can be projected orthographically too. Different types of planes have their characteristics while projecting. Planes can be classified as principal planes, inclined planes, and oblique or skew planes. Before we go any further on projection of planes, I want you to discuss on these different types of planes, their characteristics on projection planes, and sketch their orthographic projections too. Take triangular plane as an example. Go ahead and do that now.
Welcome back. Projection of a plane requires to projecting its main parts of the plane. For example, corners, centers, intersection points, etc. Let's see the projection of the simplest plane, triangle. Principal planes are plane surface, which are parallel to the three principal planes. These surfaces can be called as vertical plane, horizontal plane, and profile plane according to their parallelism width. These planes appear normal or true shape on the projection plane they are paralleled with. Inclined planes are plane surfaces which are inclined to two of the three principal planes but perpendicular to the third plane. Oblique or skew planes are plane surfaces which are inclined to all the three principal planes. Students, now hold your paper in a way that you can see everything on it. This view is relatively the true shape of a plane. But if you try to see the edge of a paper with one eye, you might see the paper as a line. This view is known as the edge view of the plane. And note that the true shape of a plane and the edge view of a plane are perpendicular to each other. Views of a plane in a space can be obtained by projecting the vertices of the plane on the various projection planes. To find the edge view of a plane, we need to apply the concept of true length and point of view of a line. First, draw a horizontal line from one of the vertex to the opposite side of the triangle. Construct the projection of the horizontal line on the other view of the plane. This line is obviously the true length of the horizontal line. Set up an auxiliary view perpendicularly to the true length of the line to find its point view and the edge view of the plane as well. Constructing the normal view or true shape of the plane requires an extra auxiliary view which is parallel to the edge view of the plane. Project the vertices of the plane from the edge view. Since all edges of the plane are at equal distance from a single projection plane, every side of the plane will be projected in true length and in effect the plane is shown in its true size and shape. Well, students, you have learned basic concept in technical drawing and in descriptive geometry. The projection of point, line, and plane is the base in projecting any kind of objects and in solving complicated geographical and production problems. Before we conclude our lesson for today, let's briefly revise what we have learned. In today's lesson, we have seen the basic projection methods of point, line, and a plane along with their cases. We have developed the concept of projection, principle, and oblique lines along with the construction of true length and point view of a line. Then we upgrade the concept of projection to a two-dimensional level, projection of planes. Planes can be normal, inclined, or oblique. Finally, we have seen the methods of projecting an edge view and true shape of the plane. Students, keep practicing your sketching from the checkpoints on your textbook. Teacher, please assist the students on their practices. In our next lesson, we will see 
construction of auxiliary views. Until then, thank you teacher and thank you students. Goodbye.